Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I thought I'd show you how to do something in M Sound Factory. Recently, somebody asked how you can use uh, M Sound Factory to you know, play multi samples, especially percussion samples, and play them chromatically. So, normally in something like M Drummer, of course, you can adjust the sample, but let's say if you wanted to play. Uh, uh, let's say a tom drum as a scale like a C major scale you can't really do it but in M sound factory you can so I want to show you how you can do that and maybe a few other things so let's get started I'll go to the globals here and let me move this all the way down and move the sustain up I might move the gain down just a little bit just to blow out your ears uh, now what we're going to use here is the multi-sampler. Now you can use the regular sampler for this, but I'm going to use a multi-sampler just in case you want some of those, uh, you know, uh, velocity layers. Uh, we can use anything. Uh, I'll just go here since it's open. I talked about toms before, so let's use a tom. I'm not sure exactly which one. Yamaha, Maple. Uh, any of them should work, you know, fine. Let's try this. Emperor 13. So that's good, and one of the first things I might want to do here is make sure you have the sample that you like. Now, we're going to need to actually tune it. Um, actually, before I do that, one of the things I can do is use this per semitone, and this is going to let us play it chromatically. Now, no matter what note I hit on my keyboard, it sounds the same. But if I change this to 1, that means every note is going to go up exactly one semitone, like this. Like that. Um, but one of the things you'll notice is it may not be in tune. If you're lucky, maybe it will be. But let's say it's not, which it probably isn't. There's a few ways we can do this. Uh, one way I can go into effects here, and I have... I actually have the tuner already there. If you don't have it open, just open it, find it here, open it up. We have the tuner. Now I'm going to hit a note. I'm going to hit C and see how close it is. I didn't mean to, that. <laughs> I wasn't trying to make a pun. So right now I'm getting D sharp three. So because of that, I want this to be C. I'm actually hitting the note C on my keyboard. So let's use the pitch shift and move it down. Let's say about negative three. Now let's try it. It's a little bit sharp. The one of the problems with percussion is it's hard to get them exactly in tune. Uh, but hopefully this is close. And also, if you think like, ah, you know, it's a little bit off, I can do, adjust it with even more fine detail, like negative 3.15. Let's see if this gets closer. Yeah, of course. You can do this forever, and I don't know if you want to, because you, you can, you know, drive yourself crazy by doing this. Uh, one thing you also might want to compare it to is because something like a tom drum it's not a steady pitch. It's going to move up and down over time. So sometimes I like to take a oscillator here and just set it to a sine wave and see if it matches up. Let me turn the volume down. That didn't seem too bad. It could be a little bit better. Actually, let me leave it. Was it negative? Let's try 3.1. There we go. Maybe as good as I'm going to get. And so we have that one. It's sounding pretty good. Actually, turn the oscillator off. And because it's a multi-sample, of course, I can play with different velocities there. And there's a number of other things I can do, too. I can go into the pitch here if I wanted to do it another way here. And I can actually adjust the pitch over the lifetime if I really wanted to get it. So it's like, oh, there's no pitch drop or anything. I could, I could probably even it out if I wanted to. I'm not going to do it here because it's going to take too long. Uh, you can mess with the layers and how those work. And one thing you might want to do here is the color because it has a... Uh, overheads and other things too so or you can do it this way whichever way you think is better you can do that 
Now, I think another thing that was asked about was the, uh, was it key splits? So before we do that, we're actually going to need another example. So we're going to take this and just copy and paste it here. Paste. Okay, I'm going to turn that one off and let's change this to something else. Let's, uh, let's try Timbale. Let's see if I can get something that sounds good here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to turn the pitch shift off. It might actually be the same note, but if it's not, let's look in here. Turn our tuner, move it to here. So it looks like F sharp. Okay, I'm going to move, have to move this way down. Uh, I probably should think about this. I could add it up. But... If I actually use math, this would probably be faster, but there we go. Okay, let's try negative five point. Let's try seven. Nah. I can get a little bit closer, I think. Negative 5.8. A little bit off. And also, I think, oh, you know what? This is a little bit too high. So let's move this down an octave. So what would that be? I have negative 12. The negative, uh, was it 17.8? See how the tuning looks on that? Uh, no, I need to move that. Negative 17.6. I'm sorry, I don't want to do this all day, but that, that may be as good as we're going to get. So, because I don't want to spend all day doing this, uh, we'll stick with that. Now that we have this, we should have both samples. Now let's say I want the tom drum in this octave. There. And I want the, was it timbale? Uh, here, in this octave. Now how do we do that? So we're gonna use a key split and we right click on the multi-sample here and you see this note minimum. We're just gonna go here and you can, of course, double click it and find it here if you already know what it is. If not, I just like to hit one note, like I'll hit the C here and just move it up until it's, I can't hear it anymore. Okay, so it must have been C3. So I'll move it back down, C3, there. And now I'll hit the C an octave above it. Okay, so that was C4. And I want to go down just... Actually, I can leave it there. Actually, I'll do it right below, so... I'll do a B3. So here. And if I play outside of that, it won't play. So there is our one uh, key section. And for the other one, we should do the same thing. So we'll start at B4, or sorry, C4, and move up for the timbale, like this. So where we are, C4. And then we'll end at, I'll do C5. Okay. Now when I play this, There we go. So now we have our split. And if you're worried like, hey, these aren't exactly the same in volume, of course, you can change that by, uh, you know, using a mixer and adjusting the levels that way. You can use the effects here to, you know, add anything you want. There's even per voice effects in here we can use, uh, but it should be fairly easy for you to manipulate it uh, from here. And of course, if you want more, just do, you know, add more multi-sampler modules. And, as I said before, you can use the normal sampler, and you see here, it has the exact same things. So, it's easy for you to use the multi-samples or the normal samples, and you can just drag and drop whatever sample you want in here. Do the exact same procedure. If you want to make your own multi-samples, it is actually possible, but you need M Drummer. I might do that if you're interested. I'll do it in a separate video, and I'll show you how you can make your own multi-samples if you have, you know, some old samples lying around. And then you just import them here, and, you know, you're good to go. 
So I hope that answered anyone's questions. If you have anything else you want to ask me, uh, leave that down below. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and check out all the other products at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.